Okay, so look on your uh, campaign election for MEP, um, the Irish Independent poll has put you uh, in third very uh, position against Marion Harkin. Yes. And uh, are you surprised at that? Well, uh, I've been canvassing for the last 15 days and I've been putting the message out there that I think Europe has gone too far. We need to go back to being a community. And I've been getting a, a, a brilliant response and all my other canvassers have. So um, uh, I also did an opinion poll uh, before I announced my candidacy. And uh, that opinion poll uh, is pretty much in line with uh, what I expected. And I think it's certainly good news uh, for those people who are sick and tired of the government. The idea that uh, the government may not get an MEP elected in Dublin to me that uh, makes it easier for me to get up in the morning I have to say the idea that they might have only one MEP out of four in the area that I'm running in that certainly cheers me up and the idea that they might not have an MEP in uh, the uh, southern constituency I think uh, they're, it looks like they might get the kicking they deserve in this election because uh, I've been canvassing for many years but uh, in the last 15 days I have to say what I have met has been shocking uh, in one day in Ashburn in Mead I met uh, three ladies who broke down crying on the street because things were that tough with the clothes half fallen off them because they couldn't afford to buy new ones. I sit down and I listen to John Fitzgerald from the ESRI telling us that things are getting better. Well they say you live in a bubble when you're in Dáil Éireann and I'm not saying I did but I certainly got to see a few facts in the last 15 days. We are not growing. I have spoken to over 400 businesses in the last 15 days days and two of them told me things were going well and those two were quite obviously lying the rest of them are on their knees it isn't a question of when if they'll go out of business from the people I'm talking to it's when they'll go out of business so the first thing you do if you want to solve a problem is you've got to realise you have a problem. But unfortunately, this government is in denial. And it's actually affecting us when we go out to Europe. Because if you're looking to have your debts written down and you're telling those same people that things are going well, they're not going to write down your debts and they're right. We need to go out there and tell them the truth. It's unsustainable. And David McWilliams has this analogy with the front room and how in Ireland we like to make things look good. It's time we bought, brought the ECB into the kitchen and into the bedrooms to see that the cupboards are bare, that there's no clothes on the bed, and that if we don't get a write down, we are going to have to take serious action and if that means unilaterally withdrawing from the euro, so be it. Okay, can we also see that Mark Carthy is doing very well. Yes, uh, yeah. Ex extremely well as well. Do you think that's a turnabout and a change, of, a change in people's thinking politically? Well, it certainly is. Uh, the idea that uh, you would have uh, out of a four-seater, you would potentially have someone from Sinn Féin, potentially have two independents elected. Uh, that is a massive sea change. But it's been a long time coming and uh, there are times when you'd wonder how obvious does it have to be that Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael and Labour do not have the people's interest at heart. But it seems that finally people are waking up and hopefully this will come through in uh, not only the European elections but in the local elections because some people will say what power do county councillors have they certainly have one power and that is you take resources away from the main political parties in the run-up to a general election and let's say in this county if you get six more independents elected or you get six more uh, of the parties outside the main political parties elected that means you have 180,000 euros and resources to fight the next general election and more importantly it means they do not have those resources so this is all a build up really to the next general election where hopefully we'll wipe them out for good. Okay and another point as well and John mentioned it there when he was speaking earlier um, the fabric of society the community is seemingly it's losing face with oh all yes. things we see the the post offices are under threat maybe credit unions have gone local banks have closed down uh, not enough teachers in school I mean you know where, where's it going to stop? Well, can I just comment on what you said about Sinn Féin? I mean, you know, the days of, of crying unclean, unclean, when the, when the word, you know, when the, when the name Sinn Féin is mentioned, are going, are gone, they're long gone. And Mr Kenny should realise that, uh, you know, the independence in Sinn Féin are growing in this country. And he should remember that a couple of years ago, Fianna Fáil were wiped out. And that, you know, Fine Gael and the Labour Party are facing, you know, a similar fate in a couple of years' time. Now, in relation, I mean, in relation to the unemployment figures, I mean, it's a pure laugh. They're saying the unemployment figures are dropping. I mean, you know, I mean, that, that employment is rising in this country. Absolute farcical. I mean, when you take emigration and the way that the, that the unemployment figures have been massaged, 
um, you know, people people who are actually who are really unemployed are putting these so-called work schemes and whatever, and the figures are the job bridge yeah, and the other schemes, and the figures are being massaged. I mean, it is totally, totally. People are not fooled anymore, on you. People will not be fooled anymore, you know. But in relation to the European Union, you know, we, you know, we have, or we, we are slowly becoming under the total control of this European superstate. You know, as I said earlier on, when Ireland first joined the, the, you know, the EEC as it was then back in 1973, all right, we needed to be members of the EEC because you know our, our farmers, you know, our farmers needed the grants coming from Europe and whatever, and in many cases they still do. But in relation to the to the overall situation in this country, there are thousands and thousands of our people, right, who are living their lives behind their curtains, right. They are afraid to come out and say, "I'm in trouble. I need help." Right? The situation in this country it is far, far worse, if that is imaginable, than has been to date reported in the media. There are thousands and thousands of people, you know, people in, you know, caught in the middle in so-called Middle Ireland, who were in desperate, who were in, in who were in dire straits, who were in, who were in, a, who were in a very, very desperate situation. So, Luke, if you think these people, if they come out and vote and vote with a change, will it yeah. happen this time? Well, it's it's the beginning of change, as they say. How do you eat an elephant bit by bit? And uh, while you're eating the, the first small bit, the rest looks fairly daunting. But if you keep going, you will actually do it. And it's not going to happen overnight. But uh, one thing it does do, if we have a successful European and local elections, it means that, and it isn't all about resources, but it's still very important, it means in the run-up to the next general election, we can have a real go at actually taking a majority there in Dáil Éireann. Because that's what I believe people want. Uh, I think they've given up on an awful lot of political parties. I think they've given up on this idea that someone else is going to do it for them. They know now that they've got to do it for themselves and that's the only way that it'll work. But, like, I mean, the amount of spin there is, though, out there about how things are improving. I mean, all you have to do is start off at the beginning where your child is born. And when your child is born in this country, and I have a child on the way in September, everything going all right, my wife will have to deal with the situation where the midwife will have to deliver twice as many babies as the international standards say, say, say are safe. Then when that child leaves, if we want childcare for that child, that childcare will cost us more than any other country in the world. Then when that child goes to school, they'll go to a school where there aren't enough teachers. Now, things are going well, are they? Then if that child works its arse off throughout its whole life in school and gets through secondary school without any guidance teacher and talks to the janitor if they've got mental problems because that's what you've got to do in this country and they manage to get their leaving cert and then they get to college and there's no fees but there's a, a registration fee but there's no fees and they can't afford to go there. If they manage to get through that, what's their reward? They get to emigrate. Things are going well, are they? Well, look, at you wouldn't want to be too ambitious to want something better than that for this country and for your children. And that's what I'm looking for. I don't think but we're that's asking not too much. Happen overnight either, is it? No, it's not going to happen overnight, but it'll certainly never happen if you never try. And you'll never finish that race if you never get out of bed. So we've got to do that. Uh, the mainstream parties like Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and Labour say that the independents can't deliver. Well, uh, well, when they say we can't deliver uh, up until uh, the amount of independence that got elected to Dáil Éireann in, in, in this Dáil, I don't think I'd have been able to answer that question very clearly. But with the experience that we've had in there with the independence on various issues, when needs come about, we actually are coherent. And I'll give you an example. We had a situation where the technical group put forward a motion that we do not pay this bank debt. And we had people from the left, and as far left as you can get, such as Joe Higgins, and people such as Shane Ross on the right, all going with the same strategy. Same thing for turf cutters. I put forward a motion uh, uh, leading it from by the technical group and even though we all come from p different political strands, different political ideologies, different parts of the country, we all came together and we agreed on it. And on the whole issue of uh, corruption within the Garda Síochána and the judiciary, well, uh, I think we might call it the Pink Revolution, Mick Wallace, Claire Daly and myself and Joan Collins, well, 
we didn't have any agreement uh, at the beginning that we were all going to go the one way on it but now we have a situation where a supposed rag bag of independence are now dragging the government kicking and screaming down the road of an independent police authority so can independence be coherent and can they run the country well the proof of the pudding is in the eating and we're eating it at the moment so john you had to go to the independence to solve your problem yes correct claire daly this is the most undemocratic government that this state has ever had right they have the biggest majority in Dáil Éireann I think of any previous government in the history of this state right I, I, I mean the public are not aware of this but debate has been stifled for the last three years in Dáil Éireann the guillotine has been used on more occasions than in the history of, of in the history of this state more than any other previous government has used the guillotine Right, where bills are just pushed through. There are four, four or five people in this country making, making all of the decisions. The ordinary members of Fine Gael and the Labour Party are nothing more than cannon fodder. They are just given instructions, go in, read out a script, a prepared script in the Dáil Chamber, and then leave the chamber and walk back in like, a, like sheep to vote, whichever way they're told to vote. Right? The only people in this country that are really having any effect, as far as I'm concerned, are the independents and Sinn Féin, nobody else. Nobody I think else. the popular polls are showing, showing that at the moment. The, the, the polls are showing that the popularity is with Sinn Féin. And sorry, on, in spite, sorry, I mean the independents are performing, the independents, in spite of the way the media have treated them. This man has been treated despicably, as has Mick Wallace, Claire Daly, and on occasion the other independent TDs, right? But now the public in this country will no longer be fooled. And I think that's, you know, an, an awful lot of that is down to social media. Now, I'm utterly useless. This is an expert on the social, on social media. But this government, or junta, they're more like a hunter than they are a democratic elect- democratically elected government. Right? By using the guillotine, as I stated earlier, right, they have stifled debate. Debate is the most important. The mo- the, the, the debate is of the utmost importance in the houses of the Oireachtas. And that debate has been stifled over the last three years. There is not, there's no debate. The only debate you hear, the only debate you hear, um, are those allowed by Mr. Kenny, Mr. Gilmore, et al. So it's time for change. Oh, time for change, yes. Okay. Do you feel you have a strong position if you become an MEP to get in there and do that? One of the big benefits uh, to me becoming an MEP MEP is that it will scare the living daylights out of the government to realise that a message that I'm putting out there, that the European Union has gone too far, that a community is good but a super state is bad. If I win on that mandate, believe me, they'll go out there and they'll copy it and they'll devour it and they'll steal my clothing. But as long as that clothing involves them taking on the European Union and not lying down then we've won then we've won and that's what we want to do ultimately I don't really want to go out to Brussels no more than Parnell or O'Connell didn't want to go to London but as they said put me in to take us out